All right, Rob, I've got a box here. Why don't you start opening it? You want me to open uh, it? Yep, okay. this is all for you today. Wait, are these, didn't I use these in the hardness video? You sure did. Well, we're not doing it again, right? Well, we what are you <laughs> <laughs> We are doing are the toughness scale today. If you wanted to give the minerals in a line of a toughness scale, this might be your closest thing to cool. it. Cool. Okay, all right, I'll play your game, Brittany. Yeah. <laughs> So I have one box for you. Here's the box. You have a lot of stuff in the way though, so it's kind of far from you. Oh my. Oof. It's also heavy because okay. uh, there's okay. a lot in there. So okay. why All don't right. you take him right. out of the box, Rob? Yeah, wow, I got a ton of stuff here. You okay. do have. Yeah, so I've got a I've got a quartz here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, corundum. This guy that I always forget the name of. Ah, that's selenite, a variety of gypsum. That's a huge, God, this guy is so beautiful. This topaz. This right here is a wonky little fluorite. And then this is a big old <laughs> trippy block of calcite. Mm -hmm. You can see it's uh, making two of my fingers, which is super, super cool. That right there looks like a diamond. It is. And this is orthoclase. So uh -huh. all of these minerals and gems represent their respective numbers on the most hardness scale. Yes. That's what you meant. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Quartz. So like quartz seven, fluorite four. Okay, I'm there. Diamond yeah. ten. Gotcha. Okay. okay. But they fall in a different order, one through ten, in terms of toughness. They do. So I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna have you start off with organizing back up to the Mohs hardness scale. We did a previous episode on this on the Mohs hardness scale. So hardness deals kind of with the outer part of the gem or mineral because that's you resisting to be scratched. Toughness represents is more of like the inside of the gem material or mineral, and it's the ability of the atoms when they are bonding together. And how that bonding resists breakage. There's also just so many different types of stress that can be applied to the material that it's hard to give like one value of like a straight number, like the hardness scale. What we're doing today, and why I mentioned a little small asterisk, is that we have kind of like a general value range of the toughness numbers for these minerals. Gotcha. So we're going to reorganize them into a potential toughness scale. A shout out to the 2006 study that I'm basing most of this information on. They did a wonderful job of going through the comparisons of the most hardness scale and trying to apply the toughness values to them. Cool. And so Rob, without any particular information, I'm gonna have you reorganize them into what you think their toughness okay. value scale might be. Well, okay, great. Okay. One. Okay. Two, tough. Okay. It is rather tough, isn't it? How many times are you gonna make that joke? Hopefully not too many more. <laughs> mm. Three. Sure. Four. Sure. Five. Mm-hmm. Six. Uh-huh. Ten. Seven. Nine, eight. How am I doing? <laughs> Well, to give you a small clue, there's not too many that are switched in the order. It's more like the ends stay the same and then the middle kind of like rearranges itself a little bit. But diamond is still, is diamond still 10? Diamond's still 10. Well, there are minerals that have a higher toughness than diamond and those- But from the 10. But from what we have here, okay. diamond is still a 10. I would like to shout out Jade. Okay. So much higher in toughness than Tough diamond. Goodies. Okay, all right. Well, then let me put diamond back on the uh, back on the end. I think I literally just put them back in order. You did. You sure did. Great. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. That's Help totally cool. That's cool. Um, How about I do this? Sure. Why not? So there's a general baseline to toughness. Like you at least have to be like this tough to get like a value for talc and gypsum that we have here. Those two materials are just way too soft Not to tough. like have pressure against it to like give it a value. So it's typically oh, gotcha. valueless. Not tough, so Not it doesn't have enough. a value. So those okay. two remain the same. And so next we do have calcite. Okay. That is right here. Now we're gonna do a small switcheroo. 
So appetite oh. is going to go next. Okay. As being four instead of five, and then orthoclase is going to jump all the way down here next to appetite. I'm amazed at what fluorite's doing right now. I know. It's, okay. Isn't it? It's it's creeping up, and actually fluorite does remain here. So <laughs> while it does have a hardness of four, it is tougher than both appetite and orthoclase. I want to say these are quite linear per se, but like the values between at least these three are very close, but fluorite just kind of like ekes it just out a little out. bit at the okay. top. Okay, way yes. to go fluorite. Proud uh, of you. And actually, you got this part spot on. So topaz is going to come before quartz, and then it's quartz, corundum, and then diamond. Okay, so it does seem just from the spread that it is more than loosely tied to hardness. A little bit, yeah. Okay, because the only ones loose. that changed their position are these three. Pretty much like the whole middle kind of got swapped a little bit, and then you have your remaining ends, like diamond and corundum, and then talc, gypsum, and calcite also remain there. Oops. And then we have the middle here that just kind of like, we're gonna do, we're gonna play musical chairs. We're a little different. Just a little. You could use this as the general toughness scale if you wanted to give it one, but like I said, like if you apply more different pressures, like this would also probably change. But Jade, would be over here. Jade would be like, Jade would be like off, off the table. <laughs> okay. It would be. Cool. That's what makes Jade such a terrific carving material, is mm -hmm. that it's soft enough to get scratched and carved, but it's tough enough that like, if you drop it. Mm -hmm. It is sturdy. No break. It is strong. Yeah. <laughs> so you said this team of scientists conducted a variety of experiments to test the toughness of these stones. What kind of experiments are we talking? I'm gonna simplify this because the paper is like several pages long and there's, it's very sciencey. There was a lot of different formulas used to calculate, but it was also based off of using like loading, unloading, shear stress, depth, cleavage, how it was cut, and like all these sorts of parameters go into the testing and calculating of toughness at the very end. The toughness unit that they give, which is pretty much capital M for mass and then PA for, I think, Pascals. And then it's times by like little m to like the half exponent. So they weren't just like, okay, hit this one with a hammer. That's tough. Okay, <laughs> hit this one with a hammer. Not tough. Which is kind of how it feels right now to me. I, like, <laughs> originally, when if, I first... if you're If you're an outsider looking in, I guess you could say that's the general Yep, they're just hitting something and be like, mm hmm, yep, that's great. But you have to get like an exact, like you have to do it the exact thing like each time for. It's science. It's, yeah. You have to conduct the same experiment mm -hmm. multiple times in order to confirm results and hypotheses. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. The study was interesting because it contradicts the way toughness is typically listed for these gems. For instance, diamond isn't usually considered tougher than corundum. So Robert, what surprised you the most after reorganizing? Probably the big jump that fluoride made. So it's a four on the hardness scale, and it's often regarded as a stone that like needs a little extra protection if you're gonna set it in jewelry. Like mm -hmm. I see fluoride with scratches all the time. Oh, absolutely, and it like has perfect cleavage. So it yeah. cleaves also very nicely. Yeah, and that's how it's an octahedron at all, is mm -hmm. cleave, 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 cleave. So the fact that it jumped all the way up to, what is it, six? Nearly perfect for jewelry, you know. Like I, I kind of, I kind of, in my head, I sort of make the core, the cutoff at quartz seven, for like, yeah. don't worry about it, it's gonna be fine jewelry. And six is like, right, pretty decent. It's it, like yeah. right there. I'm proud of my boy Fluorite. Showed up it on the day. Make the Way to go. the biggest jump. So like these two switched, and then these kind of switched, except they just moved down, and then yeah. Fluorite was like, I'm gonna go I'll all go the way over there. here. Yeah. So yeah, I, don't I see know. some movement. I'll slide in. <laughs> it's it's a neat representation. Like okay, so at the extremities, it's pretty much the same, but like in the middle, it the gets middle a little. Middle is where it gets a little swimmy. Yeah. Little swimmy. Brittany, thanks for this fun challenge. I like this little test you put me through today. Thank you to the researchers who published this paper and did all of that number crunching and hammer swinging. And thank you to the viewers who suggested this video idea. If you have any other video suggestions, leave them in the comments section. Yep. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you for watching.